everyone, it's Nicole, and I'm here with the Watercolor Wednesday edition of my YouTube channel. And today we're going to be working with gelatos. And so I dug through some of my gelatos and I picked some of the colors that I really like. And I'm showing you that I'm doing it on some watercolor paper. And this is a pad. And um, it's a pad that's all stuck together so that you can work directly on the pad and then there's less warping because it's all stuck together and once you're done you can pull it apart the problem is it's bigger than 12 inches it's I think like 16 or something like that so I just you know draw a line so that I, I know that where the 12 inches end and then I start playing I went and got a bottle of water uh, it was just a leftover bottle and I'm going to use so I can use it with my gelato I put a little bit in a container which I end up spilling everywhere but anyway <laughs> and I want to use these tissue papers from Tim Holtz I've had them in my stash for quite a while and I haven't used them and they're amazing I mean they're like it's like a tissue wrap except it has all kinds of stuff on it now I could have put it in its entirety because I end up covering the whole background but I just like the fact that by cutting it apart and putting it in different strips it it gave some texture to my pattern paper also or to my background so now I'm adding some gel medium and gel medium can act as a glue so um, I put some on the bottom and then on the top of the tissue paper and it seals it right in and uh, you can you can do that with a few things you can add pattern papers or um, regular tissue paper that has you know nothing on it or there's once I did it with a napkin so you know sometimes you'll go to the dollar store and you get these beautiful napkins you can buy them separate your napkin because the napkin has a few layers you separate it and then it acts like this and um, with the finished layout you don't get to see a lot of what's in the background but with me mixed media it has a lot to do with layers and if that layer would wouldn't have been there then what I put over top it would have affected it differently and that's what I love about mixed media is when you think that you totally hate it and you don't like it just keep going keep adding keep adding different layers and different paints and and eventually it, it just clicks it just happens um, with all the different layers it just something almost magical happens and all of a sudden it's this beautiful background and it totally has to do with all the layers that you put in and then what you do to put over top to push that first layer back into the background and then you keep building on top of that okay so Basically, that's what I just keep doing. I just keep ripping pieces of that um, tissue paper, putting some gel medium on the bottom, and then actually that's not gel medium. That's matte medium. You could use gel medium, but I had some matte medium there. Same thing. I just put it on the bottom and then on top, and it just really, like I said, acts like a glue then I believe I stepped away and really let it um, really dry up on its own and then I start adding layers on top of that a few times I've done this kind of layer too with pattern papers um, you just cut apart some pattern papers leftover pattern papers and it creates a background also but tissue paper's fun because it's so thin and it just adds you know a lot to the background so now everything is dry 
and I'm just going to separate it from my pad just so that it makes it a little easier to um, work with and this is the first time I spill my water because when I moved over my my big uh, thing of uh, watercolor paper I knocked the water over so I had to clean that up there before it soaked into some other stuff so there you go I'm going to separate the paper and I believe right off the bat I'm just going to cut it down to 12 by 12 and then it's going to be in a more manageable size so now I'm going to add some gesso and um, I have my gesso it's from Liquitex and I have it in a big uh, I think it's 1.5 liters and it's not clear gesso it's white gesso if I said clear gesso I do have clear gesso but this is white gesso and it comes in a big tub of 1.5 liters and that you have to pour it out so what I ended up doing is going to Michael's and they had these jars and it's a fairly big jar but it's deceiving because it's a double cupped one so it's actually smaller but I figured eh, it probably just means that it's sealed better and my gesso you know won't dry out as fast but at least now it's an open jar I can stick my you know my paintbrush in it and you know be able to use it and not have to worry about having to get every you know if, if with the other bottle if I put some on my my mat and I didn't use it all I had to scrape it back up and put it in my bottle this way I don't have to worry about it and plus the other one is it's a big bottle <laughs> so it was kind of cumbersome to work with so this is nice just in that little bottle I ended up putting <clears throat> one or two coats of the gesso and again it's all about pushing stuff into the background with mixed media so I put the tissue paper and with the gesso I'm pushing it into the background and you can decide whether you want to put one or two coats I believe I put on a second coat I'm not really sure I put on a coat maybe after I put some gelatos on so on Wednesdays what we're gonna do is I'm going to play with some I call it watercolor Wednesday but it's because I'm gonna play with some colors and some waters it's not necessarily gonna be watercolors <laughs> um, I just wanted to have you know a name that kind of represented that yes there's going to be some color and some water some weeks it might be watercolors and then other weeks it's just going to be you know um, different mediums so now I'm, I'm looking in my stash and I want to use um, this is light modeling paste and the template is I think it's a crafters workshop template and I'm just going to put some light modeling paste on a few spots on the layout and it's just so that again it's going to create some different textures because when I add the gelatos the gelatos are going to grip differently on the rest of the background than where there's going to be some modeling paste where there's some modeling paste the gelatos are going to be more concentrated so it's going to give it you know um more interest and then so I added just in a few little spots there and I'm going to clean off my template right away because if you don't then it becomes cement it's still cleanable but then it's just a pain <laughs> just takes a little longer to clean and then I stepped away and let that dry so when I come back everything is dry and now I'm going to play with some gelatos like I said I went through and a few months ago um, they came out with packages I had the big package of gelatos and then they came out with a few different full packages and I think there was like 15 in each some of them were repeats 
and then there was a few uh, newer ones and I bought those also and what I did was I took a box of it was a Studio Calico Project Life card I was a member of the Project Life Studio Calico and I cut off the top part of the box and then I put all my not all my I put my gelatos in there some of my gelatos and I went through that box and I picked some colors that were I went with blues greens and then some greens that were kind of green and look kind of yellowish and I'm just randomly putting them all over the, the page and then I'm just using a size 18 round brush and I'm just adding water <laughs> and I'm going to end up mixing some of the gelatos and I just had a bunch of fun and um, at first I was trying to be really picky about where I was putting the colors and then I just decided nope just lay down the color have fun just you know spread that gelato and then you're going to see once I have the whole page covered then I'm going to say okay I want to add you know some more green here and some more blue and I'm just going to make this I don't know almost ombre effect of these two colors that I you know well shades of colors that I chose and I didn't really know what picture I wanted to use but it really reminded me of an outdoors page and at first I thought it maybe I was going to do a zoo page and um, the more I played with it um, then it kind of reminded me of when we took Mason to Butterfly World last summer. I wish we could have gone this summer, but we didn't manage to go this summer. But I still had some pictures from last summer that I hadn't scrapped of him at Butter Butterfly World. And those are the picture or one picture that I'm going to decide to use. At this point, I didn't know um, what embellishments I was going to use with this, what pictures. And I find when I scrap from my stash, like when I just pick stuff. Mm, yeah, I think like for Watercolor Wednesday, I pick, uh, basically I start with the background, right? And then I have to go and pick my supplies. And man, do I find that hard. Because <laughs> I'm looking at my all my stash and going, what collection again had those tones in? And I find it really hard. Uh, but before I continue with that, I took one of my Tim Holtz template and I had my gesso um, sponge, I guess, um, left and I just made a different texture using, you know, leftover of the gesso. It's I could have used white paint, but why take out something else when I still had gesso sitting there? still available you know it was still wet so I ended up using that and then I end up taking just the paintbrush or the foam brush and just add in more texture just using the foam brush and there's a lot of drying with mixed media there's a lot of drying time this page took me about an hour and 40 minutes to complete and a lot of it is drying time you have to wait for stuff to dry but in the end it's totally worth it and I find when I do uh, mixed media layout, I end up, you know, putting a little bit less maybe embellishments because I love the background and I don't want to cover it. Now I went into my stash. I got a few Kaiser Craft stamps and I'm using uh, my stays on because I know I want to add probably colors over that and more inks and more um, different wet stuff and I don't want that ink to bleed so some of the stamp sets that I use one was a rock one and I think that's what it's called the other one is called memory and then uh, 
what was the other one? One was a Stampin' Up wheel, and it was just like a music wheel that I've had forever. And I just added, and, and that's the thing, you just want to add layers. <laughs> so, you know, I just, and I'm not being careful at all. I just kind of take the stamp set, I put it in the ink, and then just randomly stamp it over the layout and then I'm going to come back I believe later and add some more and you know I just thought of this but um, you know what's funny is I didn't like I thought that um, the color combination was just you know as I was going through and kind of picking the the gelatos and kind of playing with them and then a couple days later, so this page was done, a couple days later, I received an order that I had ordered from um, Simon Says Stamp. And um, it was a pouch that you can buy now. Let me see, it's right here. Let me see if I can reach it. A pouch that you can purchase now, and it is from uh, Wendy Vecchi? Vecchi? It's from Ranger, and it's to put, um, you know, like uh, paintbrushes and mixed media stuff, like when you go at a crop or just to keep it in there. And when I ordered it, first of all, I didn't think it was this big. It is massive. It's about 13, 14 inches by, you know, four, four or five inches big. But anyway, when I got it, it had some of these colors that I used uh, on my page and I'm like hmm I wonder when I ordered this because I mean the picture was really small but I wonder if that kind of inspired the colors for this page I mean it, it does look you know quite different but it's just the tones so it's funny how I think maybe our brain kind of takes in some stuff and then without even realizing it you you might uh duplicate it somewhere you know at some time so anyway while I was talking about that I grabbed one of my template and it looks like a I don't know a spray of water and I wanted to add uh, a different dimension again to my my background and I love white mist on a mixed media layout it just it kind of acts as the gesso because it kind of pushes those color in the back but then you can kind of control it a little bit more because it's a spray and then if you put a template you know then you get the different looks too but I've also done it so that you just kind of do it as a light mist and it just kind of gives it that allure of I don't know pushing the stuff back a little bit more to the background but the colors still peek through and I don't know yeah I just really um, like the look of adding adding white mist to um, a mixed media background like that I really love how it looks now I want to add some more colors so now I'm adding the gelatos to the packaging and I'm going to add some uh, smooshes to the background now it's all about making I don't know different textures um, I want it more of that turquoisey color to be more prominent on the layout so I'm going to go and get some mists here in the minute and I'm going to add some splatters and I'm going to use some dilutions paint which is really like um, really they're really bright and I love them they are so fun to use and more gelatos and that's the thing with mixed media is just layers upon layers upon layers and then as you look close up to a mixed media layout you see that first top layer that you you added but then if you look closer you still see that tissue paper that's in the background and then that um, template that you added with the gesso and the template that you added with the the mist and it just creates such a beautiful um, look now I'm adding some 
like I said, Dalusions paints in the blues, in the yellows. I'm adding some yellows. And I believe I'm going to add, I'm going to take the packaging and just kind of smush it around just so that it kind of uh, takes on some of the, oh, what do you call it? The paste so that it smooshes onto the paste and it kind of takes on that form too. I'm going to dry it up with my heat tool and what I like about this heat tool is I have another heat tool that's from Stampin' Up and it gets really 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 hot and this Ranger one here I find it's it's really geared for a mixed media because it doesn't get as hot but it's great for drying stuff. So I, I think even at this point of the layout I still don't know what pictures I'm going to, to use on this or what uh, embellishments I'm going to use. I'm just having fun with uh, templates and and some inks. So I, I take out a few more templates from my stash and to tell you the truth I don't even know if I use this one or not. I thought it'd be fun to add some circles or do I want to add some hearts or maybe some big circles <laughs> or some smaller circles and I just keep you know taking some stuff in and and if I put on the page I'm able to imagine it if that makes any sense if I just take it out and look at it I can't quite imagine it but if I put it on top of my layout then I can imagine it now I'm taking out a Prima color bloom and um, it wasn't even open so this is what I'm enjoying enjoying with these um, with my new schedule is I'm you know really digging into um, a lot of stuff from my stash and using that up Okay, so I had to stop the recording because the video was coming to an end and I'm like, there's still no pictures or embellishments. Because yes, there was still another 45 minute video. That's when I put the, you know, pictures and pattern papers together. So this is going to end. And then I, you know, I stopped and added the other video. <clears throat> and what I did was the next video I did it times eight because this was going to be like 40 minutes and it's it's just too long and I mean the rest of the stuff is kind of what I normally do when I scrapbook anyway so you know the different part was really the mixed media stuff so I'm going to dry everything up and then we're going to start with the layout and the picture that I decided to pick I went on to my uh, card from my camera and I found a picture of Mason when we were at um, the butterfly world last summer and you know what the funny thing is is when it pops up take a look at his shirt it is like the colors of what I put for my layout how funny is that I had absolutely no idea what pictures I was going to use but when I started looking you know when I thought, oh, Mason and his, when at Butterfly World, because I was thinking, you know, it, it looked kind of um, outdoorsy. And like I said, at first I was thinking maybe the zoo, but then I thought, no, Butterfly World. And then I remembered that pattern, uh, six by six pattern paper pad that I had also <clears throat> that had butterflies on it. But his shirt matches perfectly. And then that six by six pattern paper has it's navy and it's got butterflies on it which you don't end up seeing anyway but I just wanted um, the navy to mat his photo I'm looking I'm gonna exchange out some pattern papers but then I'm gonna decide on these and these are from we are memory keeper I got them a few months ago this is the inked rose collection and it has a hundred die cut and journaling cards and the journaling cards vary from 4x4 to 2x2. And they're just so cute. And I hadn't used them yet. And, you know, this is the great part about um, doing stuff for my stash is I am digging through and um, 
finding a bunch of stuff that I'm loving. But one thing I have to tell you, I'm finding it really difficult going through my whole stash though and, and finding something that will coordinate. Um, so this whole uh, class that I just did, sketch, uh, stretch your kit, really um, helps to unfocus from a huge thing from your stash to, you know, narrowing it down and then focusing on um, just a few things from your stash. It's still fun to scrap from your stash, but it's nice to be able to narrow it down to the point that it doesn't feel so overwhelming. So I'm going to use a second uh, pattern paper from Simple Stories and uh, <clears throat> you're only going to see from it a little bit uh, f through the die cuts because I wanted to put um, some pattern papers in behind the die cut. There was a third heart that was going to be to the left of the layout so I ended up matting it in the middle of uh, the pattern paper. That way I didn't have to use up another one. I'm going to end up putting up some of these little 2 by 2 squares on some foam, uh, foam tape from 3M. And then I end up using one of the big 4x4 four four cards too that says remember this. And I and I liked it at this point, but I'm going to end up adding another little card and that's what's going to be my title. And that's pretty much going to be all the embellishments because the background there is so much going on. Um, I wanted to keep the embellishments right around the photos. So... I did take out some buttons from my stash and they're actually from Studio Calico from their new line where they have their own inks and they have the matching embellishments where those are the buttons uh, and they're like a minty green and uh, turquoisey and so they match perfectly with that. I'm just taking some uh, thread from my stash and I'm just putting it through the holes of the buttons just so that they look like they're sewn on because I just didn't feel like <laughs> at this point I had spent I, I think I said an hour and 40 minutes to do the page it add 45 minutes to that right so it's more like two and a half hours on this page so um, I didn't feel like sewing on buttons so I just faked it I just put it through the holes and knot it you know that um, tied it up and then I added some enamel dots from my stash too in the same same colors. And um, now I'm looking through some more of my stash and I find this little die cut that says hello giggles because he did. He just giggled the whole time we were there. And then I'm going to end up taking another little card from that we are memory keepers uh, inked roses and it just has hello on it and then I'm going to take some letters from my stash from basic gray and I'm just going to add flutter by on it instead of fl butterfly and um, some most of the time that's what I call butterflies flutter bys and um, I don't know if I do that on video if I did it after but uh, no I'm doing it right now but um, I don't know if I put the title, but the title is going to go right underneath there and it just says flutter by and then there's going to be some close ups. And that's it. I can't say this was a quick layout. It took quite a bit of time, but it was sure fun to make. So be watching next Wednesday for the next um, watercolor Wednesday. This week we use some gelatos and next week. I think I'm going to be playing with some eye zincs. So here are some few close-ups and thank you so much for watching. Bye.